Washington is Purdue. Braden Smith tonight, 19 points, seven boards, seven assists, just two turnovers. Fletcher Lawyer didn't shoot it well, but he had six points, three assists, zero turnovers. And Purdue was able to more or less embarrass Minnesota. They won 61 to 39 on the road. They only gave up 12 points in the first half, and they had 36 points in the paint. Minnesota scored 39 points on the night. Terrence, if you if Purdue's gonna win games like this by 22 points when Shaq Eady has 12 and six, like what? <laughs> what are we gonna do with this team, man? I don't, play somebody else besides Minnesota. <laughs> Man, I'm not trying to be mean to Minnesota, but they have no answers uh, for that. And there's a there's a clear discrepancy between Minnesota and the rest of that league right now. And, it, you know, I like their coaching staff. I feel like they've got some pieces that are just they're just not there. They're just not there. But uh, having so many different guys and having these freshmen play well so quickly, that that's the most uh, impressive thing about this team and what Painter's been able to do. That that part's obvious. But uh, I wonder who's that rim pressure guy outside of Zach Eady, or do you even need one? Because I've always been of the belief that you have to have a guard that can get to the cup, that can create something on your own. I don't think this team necessarily has that. But when you have the immovable object in Shaq Eady, like it, it, it's, it changes things. So this goes against my conventional wisdom because I've always felt you needed at least one guy who can create something. But yeah, yeah, this let, Purdue doesn't let me ask have you guys it, and yet here quick. they are. They've only lost one. Let me, let me ask you guys this real quick, because you uh, I, there's always one of these cliches, right? By the end of the season, freshmen or sophomores. Is that Does that play into your thought process with this team at all? You know, the, the Fletcher Lawyer and Braden Smith have basically started every game. They play 30 minutes every night. Like, they're, they, they have some experience and some battles now at this point. I mean, they just won on the road, making big plays down the stretch at Michigan State in the Breslin Center, one of the toughest places, not just in the Big Ten, but in America to play. So, RC, is that... Like, does that make you feel a little bit more comfortable about having a backcourt that's two freshmen? I'll, I'll say this about in general, the statement is because by then, you know what you're good at and what you can do. You're, you're being coached on now. This is your strengths. We're going to play more to your strengths when you get to that point. And you kind of figure that out. You figure out what they're struggling with. And you try to hide it. Coaching helps those guys with that in general. But with these freshmen, the difference is like with Zach Eady. how do you want to guard him? Right. I mean, how do you guard them? So. You don't have to play one-on-one. -on -one. They're going to run their set. So they come off a ball screen. What are you going to do? Because when he rolls, I don't care if you have the six-nine bouncy guy. He's not getting up there to challenge it. So they're just turning <laughs> the corner and getting down the lane. And it's like, oh, they're just throwing lobs. Even if your guys didn't drop drop coverage, like how many guys is going to go up to their apex and and tip away a pass thrown to him? And so, and if you rotate off, the guards just got to get it on the glass. Like what weak side defender is coming over there and boxing him out? You know, I so want to I wanna what, put, I wanna put this into context. Up. I want to put this in the context for people that are listening, right? A 6'9 shot blocker trying to go up and try block Zach Eady's shot is the same thing as a 6'2 shot blocker trying to go up and block that 6'9 dude's shot. That That's the way that you have to fit. Seven inches. It's ridiculous. Six, nine guys and that's not even including his wingspan. Like, like today, all oh. it is is an and one. When you jump, it's just an and one. It's a foul or an and one. And then if you rotate over there, like better teams and get in front of them and stop the guard, what guard? Tio, I, I know I wasn't boxing his ass out. I don't know. <laughs> what guard is cracking down and keeping him off the glass or forward? I'm not. I'm just not. This is not what I'm here for. <laughs> like, you guys know what I'm here for. This is not what I'm here for. That's a pretty plain and, and simple decision for me. <laughs> uh, the thing about this Purdue team, guys, you, you know, last season they did have Jay and Ivy. But what was Jaden Ivey's biggest weakness to, in your all's opinion? Yeah. The, His, like the half court stuff, right? Yeah. Consistent focus defensively Ooh. away from the ball. These freshmen still want to be on the floor so bad they're not screwing up. And Purdue is top 20 in the country defensively. Like, keep that in mind. And you felt like, like last year when we ended the year, defensively, Purdue was 93rd in the country, according to Kim Palm. This season, these dudes are guarding, and they're not spectacular athletes on this team, but they're excellent position-wise. They stay in front, and there's not a whole lot of rotations missed. And if they do happen to be late on something like a pick and roll or coming off a stagger screen, you have to still have to run into Zach Eady. This team defense, that's what makes them different from last season defensively. That's what puts their ceiling much higher. But yeah. the, right. they don't want... they don't play with both of those bigs, and he is moving a lot. But he's just staying in front of the ball. 
So if you draw the paint and shoot a two, you're just shooting over that length. Somebody could beat them, but you're going to have to shoot the lights out because he's not coming out there behind the screen. They're just chasing guys off. You're going to have to be strategic and just saying, hey, you guys got to come off and hit mid-range shots. Or occasionally over seven, three. five. Oh, yeah, yeah, because yep. he's just sitting back. There's nothing, you're not getting anything in the paint. They're making people one dimensional. So if you don't, if you don't shoot the ball well against those guys, you, you have no shot. They're chasing them off. Like you said, the guards are doing that, but they don't have those dual bid. They're not trying to play Williams and him together. They're, they're playing, you know, just, just with him at that size. And, and, and they're just tough. They're, like you said, they're top, they're the top defensive team, but they're just so good and so efficient on the offensive end. They didn't play great today, but they hit him in the mouth early and this was over. I mean, 31 to 12 at the half. Like, it wasn't even close. Oh All right. Last, thi- 